Hey everyone, this lesson is on cataracts. So in this lesson we're going to talk about what cataracts are. We're also going to talk about some of the risk factors for getting cataracts. We'll also talk about signs and symptoms, how we can diagnose cataracts, and how we can treat them. So a cataract is an ocular condition involving opacity of the lens of the eye. Opacity simply means that the lens of the eye becomes clouded, preventing light from traveling through the lens properly. We'll talk about what each of these means in more detail a little later on. Cataracts are the most common cause of reversible blindness in the world, so they are very common. But we find that they are more common in certain ethnic groups, particularly in Caucasians. And they have a typical onset between the 5th to 6th decade of life on average. It can occur earlier on in life or later on in life. And when they do occur, they gradually and progressively worsen over time. When we look at the prevalence between males and females, they are roughly equal. There are some slight differences, but generally speaking, the prevalence is equal between the two genders. So what is the pathophysiology of cataracts? It all has to do with the lens in the eye. Now the eye is very complex, so this is a very cursory overview of eye anatomy. So here is a normal lens, and the lens is normally a clear structure, allowing light to travel through it. So light travels through a normally clear lens to reach the retina at the back of the eye, allowing us to see images. And the lens itself is composed of modified epithelial cells, and it's enclosed by a lens capsule, which is a membranous structure. So the lens itself, in a normal healthy individual, is normally like a gelatinous structure. There are ciliary muscles on either side of the lens. In contraction and relaxation of the ciliary muscles allows the lens to change shape, allowing light to be directed to the back of the eye to focus the light according to how far you are away from an image you are looking at. So because the lens is composed of modified epithelial cells and it's enclosed, the lens is not able to shed its cells properly. It's not able to regenerate cells properly and it's very sensitive structure. And the lens capsule is very, very thin. It's been described like a grape. So you can imagine a grape has a very, very thin skin, and that's essentially the lens capsule is very thin, and this structure is very sensitive to any trauma or any insults. So what happens with cataracts is that any process that can cause denaturation or degeneration or coagulation of the lens proteins can lead to opacity of the lens. These Epithelial cells and the proteins inside the lens can become denatured and coagulate and it can lead to a clouded, opaque lens, preventing light from reaching the retina properly. So what are some of the causes of cataracts? There are many different causes of cataracts and I'm going to break them down into several categories. So the first main category of causes of cataracts is age-related. This is actually the most common cause of cataracts. As we get older, we are more likely to develop cataracts. The next main category of causes are the endocrine diseases. So endocrine diseases like diabetes, galactosemia, homocystinuria, hypoparathyroidism, hypocalcemia, Wilson's disease, and malnutrition can increase your risk for getting cataracts. Another category is systemic diseases in general. Atopic dermatitis, interestingly, is associated with an increased risk of getting cataracts. Myotonic dystrophy is another one. Neurofibromatosis type 2 and HIV AIDS is also associated with an increased risk for cataracts. This is not completely known why HIV or AIDS can increase your risk for cataracts. It could be the medications that people take for these conditions that could be increasing the risk. At this point, we're not quite sure. Another category is ocular diseases in general. So ocular diseases like retinitis pigmentosa, chronic anterior uveitis, Stickler syndrome, or having high myopia or very, very nearsightedness can increase your risk for cataracts. Another category is medications. We see this with glucocorticoids, and we can also see it with acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. We can see it with certain substances. Individuals with alcohol use disorder are at increased risk for getting cataracts. Individuals who smoke are also at an increased risk for cataracts as well. Trauma is also a big category here. Anybody that has had blunt or penetrating trauma on the eye is at an increased risk for getting cataracts. UV radiation and ionizing radiation can also cause an insult to the lens, increasing the risk of cataracts in the future. 
in prior eye surgery can also increase the risk for cataract formation in the future as well. And we can also see congenital causes for cataracts as well. Congenital infections, more specifically the torch infections like toxoplasmosis and rubella, any of those infections during pregnancy can increase the risk of the infant having congenital cataracts. So as you can see, there are many, many causes or risk factors for developing cataracts. As you can see, most of them have a certain theme to them. They all involve insult or trauma to the lens. And again, the lens is very sensitive. If it has experienced any sort of trauma or any insult, it has an increased risk for developing cataracts in the future. So I'm going to talk about three main subtypes of cataracts. There are other types of cataracts, but these are the three main types of cataracts that we talk about. So the first type of cataract we're going to talk about is cortical cataracts. So here is a lens, and we can think of it as anterior portion of the lens here, posterior portion of the lens here. And the lens can be broken up into cortex of the lens and nucleus of the lens, and it's encased in that lens capsule, as I mentioned before, and we can think of the lens capsule as surrounding the lens. So cortical cataracts affect the cortex of the lens anteriorly. So with cortical cataracts, the cortex of the lens is affected. And here is what a cortical cataract looks like when we look at it with a slit lamp. And you can see here, here is another way of looking at the cataract with a slit lamp. So you can look at the cataract straight on with a slit lamp, or you can turn the slit lamp to an angle and look at the lens in a different way. So these are characteristic looks to a cortical cataract. Cortical cataracts have what we call spokes or radial spokes. So you can think of a tire with the spokes. So this is what it looks like when we look at it head on. When we look at it with the slit lamp at an angle, you can see here, here is the cortical cataract here. And diabetes and aging are actually the more common causes of cortical cataracts. So again, cortical cataract here, you may see some of these radial spokes here. And there may be some nuclear sclerosis cataract here as well. I'll talk about what nuclear cataracts are in a moment. So again, the cortex of the lens is affected with cortical cataracts. It looks like spokes and diabetes and aging are common causes. The next type of cataract are the nuclear sclerosis cataracts. Again, the nucleus is affected, so the center of the lens. And it appears yellow to brown in color. We can call it brunescent. So we can see here the slit lamp is at an angle, and then there's some yellow to brown substance here. That's the cataract. Aging is often the main cause of these types of cataracts. And the third type of cataract is the posterior subcapsular cataract. The posterior portion of the lens is affected. So if we look at the lens with a slit lamp on an angle, again, we can kind of see this area here, it doesn't quite look like the other images we looked at. It kind of looks a bit grainy in appearance. So here is the slit lamp on an angle. So you can see this kind of grainy looking appearance in the back. And then here's the slit lamp looking straight on the lens. And you can see this kind of residue and it kind of looks like a residue on the back here. So that is a posterior subcapsular cataract. Aging, diabetes, steroid use, trauma are causes of this type of cataract. What are some of the clinical features of cataracts? The signs and symptoms of cataracts include the following. Vision loss, that makes sense. If the lens itself, which is supposed to be normally clear, is clouded and light is not able to travel through it, you're going to lose some vision in that eye. So you're going to lose some visual acuity in the affected eye. This vision loss is painless. It's progressive. Remember that cataract becomes worse and worse over time and it is gradual. And what we do find is that cataracts affect distance more than near vision. So what you'll find is that an individual who's developing a cataract will lose their far sight or their distance before they'll lose their near vision. They also have issues with glare. You'll find that there may be some descriptions like starburst or halos, especially when they're driving at night, if there's any headlights coming toward them or if there's any lights at night, it looks like a starburst pattern or there's halos. So this can cause difficulties with nighttime driving. They can also have color perception changes, particularly with certain types of cataracts, like the nuclear sclerosis type of cataract. 
That one again is yellow to brown in color, so it can actually discolor their environment that they're perceiving to be almost a yellowish color. So if they look at something that's actually white, it might look a bit yellow to them. They don't even realize it. So they have a decreased ability to discern colors. And we can also see what we call a second sight phenomenon. Second sight phenomenon is essentially an increasing myopia, an increasing nearsightedness. So what is described is that individuals who used to use reading glasses to read, as their cataract gets worse, their refractive error increases, they actually don't need those reading glasses anymore. They can read without those reading glasses. That is the second sight phenomenon. How do we diagnose and treat cataracts? Diagnosis of cataracts can be overt observation of a cataract. So if we actually look at an individual, they simply have a cataract and we can see it. Ophthalmoscopy, so we can look at it using an ophthalmoscope. This is not usually the best way to do it. The best way is through a slit lamp, as we talked about before. So again, we can look straight on or we can look at it at an angle and we can see the different layers of cataract here. So we can see there might be a cortical cataract here with some spokes, and we can see this posterior subcapsular cataract here with this kind of grainy looking appearance. How do we treat these cataracts? There are actually no medical treatments available. Surgical removal is required for these cataracts. And what we do is we essentially go in, you cut open the lens capsule, and you carefully, carefully, carefully remove the lens. And after you have removed the old lens material, you can actually replace it with an artificial lens. There are several different types of artificial lenses. There are some that are used for if you have issues with farsightedness or nearsightedness. There are some artificial lenses that you require if you have an astigmatism. So there are a variety of artificial lenses. And once you have a fake lens in, we call it pseudophakia. You have a fake lens. Fakia simply means the lens of the eye. So you become pseudophagic. And then there's important follow-up with regards to cataract and cataract removal. You have to check to see if they start to get some residue on the capsule. So if there is residue that starts to build up on the capsule, they may not have the best outcomes with regards to visual acuity after the cataract removal. We would have to use something called YAG capsulotomy. YAG capsulotomy is a laser treatment of the capsule. So you don't have to go back in and do the surgery, you just have to have laser treatment to essentially scrape or laser off that old residue on the capsule. So that can definitely help with a lot of visual issues that occur after cataract removal. Please check out my ophthalmology playlist for other ophthalmology topics. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider supporting the channel by subscribing. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.